Feel good. Do you guys know why? Cause I got paid. <laughs> but the important part is how to keep your money, and you do that by managing it well. And I'm here to teach you just how to do that. Keep watching. Hi guys, it's your favourite YouTuber again, Dami Solari. And you know what you're watching, I ain't gonna tell you. DS Learning Finance. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I have several tips on how to manage your money effectively. And I guarantee one of them is definitely gonna shock you guys. Because boy, when times are hard, times are hard. But before you can effectively manage your money, you have to... Yes, yes, you in the corner with the glasses on. Yes, you have to set yourself some targets, some realistic targets. Okay, make sure they're realistic. But nonetheless, set yourself some targets. What I've set myself for this year is by the end of the year, I want to have 9K sitting in my bank account. Yeah, I did say it was going to be easy. Did I? But it's still realistic nonetheless. And I say that because then it allows you to sort of make adjustments according to how you want the year to pan out and therefore how you're gonna achieve that goal in the future. Now for me to achieve this nine grand targets, oh, nine grand, yeah. What I need to do is save 900 pounds for the next month, not including January, that's just passed in February, that's going to pass. Not including those two months, but for the remaining 10 months of this year, I need to save 900 pounds on average per month. So let me tell you guys how exactly I'm gonna achieve that target. One, leave my card at home. Did you hear me? Leave my and your card at home. Yeah, what I mean by that is, if you feel you're gonna put yourself in a situation where you're gonna aimlessly spend money, then just make sure you magically forget your card at home. Simple as, forget your money at home. That way, when you face temptation, high, high temptation, yeah, you can't succumb because you simply don't have any money available on you at that time. So my guilty pleasure is Morrison's. That's where my bank account will go if I'm not careful. Morrison's. Because it's just down the road from where I work. But Lord and behold, I leave my, magically, leave my bank card at home. And what that forces me to do is prepare packed lunch meals before getting to work. And so I get in a regime every Sunday. That's when I'll set my packed lunch meal for the rest of the week. And that in turn makes me save money. But what makes me save even more money is by leaving my card at home. So that I don't stupidly spend money on Morrison's or stupidly spend money on whatever temptations may come my way. And with that said, be sensible with when and where you decide to leave your card. So if you know you need, okay, keyword, keyword is need, okay? You need a certain amount of money to go through that day. So say you need five pounds to travel to work. Don't leave the, your your car, don't leave like your cash all at home so that you can't get to work. Like obviously, like be sensible with it. Make sure you bring just enough so that you can get through the day, just enough. So if it's a fiver, bring a fiver, just a fiver. Leave your card at home still. <laughs> and that way you can go about doing your business, go about doing, go about doing the things that are necessary for you to survive and then you can come back home and you've still been able to retain your money. So that's one big tip that I always say, leave your card at home when it comes to aimlessly spending money. Two is setting yourself a monthly plan. So I know what target I wanna achieve for that year, 
but what is exactly my monthly plan to get to that target step by step and it may not really be important for you guys but what a monthly plan does is that it allows you to pick up a sort of regime of pattern and it's the small repetitive things that make a big difference and add up over time as I mentioned, I'm going to have to be saving on average £900 every month. So that then breaks it down into sections for me. It allows me to be able to see, look back and be like, OK, how am I going to plan my month accordingly to obtain this £900 target? Three is get yourself an Excel file. Yeah. And track your expenditure, track your um, income coming into your bank account on a daily basis and what that allows you to do is basically monitor what's going on in your bank account now one thing that you will notice well you probably haven't noticed but when it comes to actually looking at your bank account things take time to really process through so a transaction maybe you might have gone to a restaurant with your partner and you don't really think about that money that's gone left your bank account but you don't see it immediately but trust me, you'll see it, well, you'll definitely see it in a few days or two. And it's that lag period that always catches people out because it builds a sort of sense of false illusion that you have a certain amount of money when really you have a bit less. And it happens It happens all the times, not just with restaurants, with everything. When it comes to taking some cash out at ACM, it can be a day or two before you actually see that money leave your bank account. And you truly don't know that way where you actually stand with your bank account. So what I truly suggest is setting up an Excel file and updating it daily. <laughs> it's able to instantaneously tell you how much money you have in your bank account, which is very important when it comes to managing your money. And for those of you that are Excel haters, paper and pen, mm -hmm. paper and pen, boy. And four is segregate your money. And what I mean by that is separating your savings from your normal bank account 99 percent of the people i know do not do this just a moment of silence for those 99 percent of people but the odd one percent actually do do this and it's it's amazing how it can really teach you how to manage your money effectively and the reason being is because there's no better way to establish boundaries between one set of money and another lump of money but by literally having boundaries so there's no better way to have that I always say you should transfer your money from one account to another account it doesn't have to be a savings account Lord knows I don't I'm not a fan of savings account technically lose money to put your money in that savings account and the bank that you're putting that money in that savings account from is making profit on your money but ain't giving you profit any profit from that interest that they're making on your money but yet they still take your money oh sorry i'm off with a tangent on that another sort of reason why i like to do that is because me i'm, I'm lazy guys i am lazy i don't do anything unless i have to do it yeah and even having to do it is sometimes not even justifiable for me to get up and do it yeah i'm very lazy but <laughs> like having two separate accounts makes things harder for you so if i have my 900 pounds in one account and i want to say i want to use that money to buy something aimlessly something that i don't need then I'm, I'm probably gonna push that back as much as possible just because I can't be bothered to transfer it from that account to that account. And that's why I would suggest getting a separate account. It doesn't have to be a savings account, but just a separate account because it acts as another deterrent to sort of prevent you from spending money. And even when I have that card, I tend to always forget the pin for that card. So I just have my normal card that I've always had from like sixth form. That's the only one that I remember the pin to. So yeah, life, life's hard if I really need the money. 
Now that I think about it, if I'm actually in a dire situation where I need that money, I'm, I'm actually screwed. Uh, oh well, I'm still going to say that. But yeah, anyway, I hope you guys like this video. I hope you guys like my channel. You know what to do, LSS, like, subscribe and share. Do your learning and find it.